Happy World Book Day everyone. So my favourite book that I read the opening paragraph to is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Reasons I love this book, it's a great example of Gothic literature. It's full of atmosphere and it's a novel that st stood with me from the moment I first read it. It kind of demonstrates how books as objects are important too. I took this off my bookshelf, I opened it, and I remember the day I bought it in Foy in Cornwall, where Daphne du Maurier lives. I think it really shows the power of books to transfer you to a time in your life when you read them. I remember reading this when I was doing my literature degree, when I was really unwell in bed, and it took me to another world. It's a beautiful, haunting book, and I'll always remember the time I read it. A simply enormous wardrobe, thought Lucy, going still further in and pushing the soft folds of the coats aside to make room for her. Then she noticed that there was something crunching under her feet. I wonder, is that more mothball? she thought, stooping down to fill it with her hand. But instead of feeling the hard, smooth wood of the floor of the wardrobe, she smelt something soft and powdery and extremely cold. This is very queer, she said, and went on a step or two further. Next moment she found out what she was rubbing against her face and hands was no longer soft fur, but something hard and rough and even prickly. Why, well, it's just like branches of trees, exclaimed Lucy. And then she saw that there was a light ahead of her, not a few inches away, where the back of the wardrobe ought to have been, but a long way off. Something cold and soft was falling on her. A moment later she found that she was standing in the middle of the wood at night time with snow under her feet and snowflakes falling through the air. Well, good day, everybody. So I chose to read a section from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which has been my favourite book since I was eight, and I got read it by my English teacher at junior school. I loved this book then, and I still love it now, because at the time I just thought it was the most wonderful blend between the ordinary and extraordinary, and for the next five years afterwards I used to dive into wardrobes in the hope that there might be a fantastical land beyond. I thought it was such an exciting concept in this book that you could have something as ordinary as a wardrobe be the vehicle into a place as extraordinary as a land like Narnia. And ever since I've had a fascination for the fantasy of worlds that lie beyond in adult literature as well. Margot dancing, I must start with that. But how to put something so visual, so potent, with theatrical movement, that even film cannot capture it into plain words? How to explain why it is that when, to a particular strain of music, an ordinary mortal steps forward onto one leg, raises the other behind her, and lifts her arms above her head, the angels hold their breath. It fell to Margot Fontaine to become what little girls dream of being, the most famous ballerina in the world. I chose this book about Margot Fontaine because she's an inspiration to me. She's a world famous ballerina and although ballet isn't my specialism, I love ballet, I love watching it and I love dancing it. And she's had a really tough life and if you read about her life, it's been really difficult and lots of people judged her but when she danced, everyone was mesmerised by her. So it's been a really interesting read and it's a book I've had for many years and have read many times. And I feel that every time I read it, I learn something new about this really, really, really amazing, beautiful dancer. Me as a cat, short as a cat, don't think you are blind. Cat's 22. Anyone who wants to get out of combat duty isn't really crazy. There was only one catch 
and that was Cat 22. We specified that a concern for one's own safety in the face of dangers that were real in the media was the process of a rational mind. Or was crazy and could be drowned. All he had to do was ask, and as soon as he did, he would no longer be crazy and would have to fly more missions. Or would be crazy to fly more missions and say he could do them. And if he was sane, he had to fly them. If he flew them, he was crazy and didn't have to. But if he didn't want to, he was sane and had to. Yossarian was moved very deeply by the absolute simplicity of this cause of Catch-22 and let out a respectful whistle. Phew! That's some catch, that Catch-22, he observed. It's the best there is. Got the new for a green. Ah! Hi everyone, so my favourite book to read from today is Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. This is perhaps the first book that I read as a teenager that was, um, in a way, not something prescribed by school and that I read independently. I remember borrowing it from the library, which was a great thrill for me. Um, and it's so funny and it's satirical and it's angry and it still makes me laugh out loud. Thoroughly recommend Catch-22. All sorts of girls meet in a theatre, not all days with one or another. The old bitter strong does not wither, the brutes are not weeped by the frost. From the ashes of fire it shall be woken, a light from the shadow shall spring. The moon shall be the blade that was broken, the crown that again shall be king. Okay, so that was me, and I was reading my favourite book of all time, which is Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I thought this book was inspirational. This is, if you're a fan, is only the first part, um, and that's one of my favourite quotes, um, and I would recommend anyone to read it. It's beautifully written. It might take you a long time, but it feels like a real journey in itself, reading the book. that were set so deep in that dreadful, rotting, worm-eaten face glared unblinkingly at the witches who sat facing her. You may remove your gloves, she shouted. Her voice, I noticed, had that same hard, metallic quality as the voice of the witch I'd met under the conquer tree, only it was far louder and much, much harsher. It rasped, it grated, it snarled, it scraped, it shrieked, and it growled. Everyone in the room was peeling off their gloves. I was watching the hands of those in the back row. I wanted very much to see what their fingers looked like and whether my grandmother had been right. Ah! Yes! I could see several of them now. I could see the brown claws curving over the tips of the fingers. Hello, and happy World Book Day. So the book I was reading from is The Witches by Roald Dahl. Um, I'm really grateful to Roald Dahl for all the books that I read as a child and loved, and then I read to my children, and we've got all of them at home, and I think they are just wonderfully written, and they're so, they create these extraordinary worlds. If you haven't um, watched a film of The Witches, I remember this because it's genuinely terrifying. Um, and in a way, I chose it because I wanted to remind you of some of the great books you may have read when you were a bit younger and loved, and to re revisit them, perhaps also to remember that there are some fantastic books out there. This was clearly Holmes of Doom. The Baker Street address was enough to prove that. It struck me as rather ingenious, because it might be read by the fugitives without their seeing it in more than the natural anxiety of a wife and a missing husband. It was a long day. Every time that a knock came to the door or a sharp step past the street, I imagined that it was either Holmes returning or an answer to his advertisement. I tried to read, but my thoughts would wander off to our strange quest and to the ill-assorted and villainous pair whom we were pursuing. Could there be, I wondered, some radical form in my companion's reasoning? Might he be suffering from some huge self-deception? Was it not possible that his nimble and speculative mind had built up this wild theory upon faulty premises? I had never known him to be wrong, 
and that the kids use them may occasionally be deceived. Happy World Book Day! Read Sherlock Holmes, The Sign of the Four. I chose this book because I love the Sherlock Holmes mysteries and this is one of the best. So if you like studying Jekyll and Hyde, you should definitely read this too. <laughs> I've read from um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because the Harry Potter book series is one of my most favourite set of books to read. Um, I've read it multiple times um, and I really encourage you, if you haven't read it, to, to go and get it and read it. Um, the reason I chose that extract is to encourage you all to come and visit us in the library. I've got World Book Day vouchers for everybody. Um, just go and see your heads of year to get your library passes and please come and see us soon. because this was, they made a bunch of these books, all self-contained stories in the universe of Doctor Who that was very popular at the time, very much a fan of at the time. And this is one that had a good gimmick to it, had a good story. And it sort of represents to me that be, even though it's not in, in like official Doctor Who, this isn't an episode you could watch, that many things that you enjoy probably have great stories around them that people have written that yeah that you can find and consume so you know whatever you're interested in there's definitely stories around them that you can find keep in mind each one of favorite stories of hunting to him and tell the tale to me the best of all were made by the meal the prince of the mountains the demon huntsman there was usually a boy in the tale and a chase a blood revenge, and a frenzied victim running in terror through the snow, pursued by the wild hunt. Great hounds were slain when more than numerous eyes, black horses ridden by green skeletons, and at the head of it all, the demon himself, swathed in impenetrable darkness with eyes of raising fire. Even our heart, in seeking the cracks of the floorboards, would pause into what and lean her plump elbows on the counter and stare with wide eyes at the latest terror of all. Hello, I chose uh, Count Colston by Philip Pullman. Uh, it's a book that I used to love reading as a child um, and um, it's not one of his uh, most well known, so I thought it would be great to uh, introduce it to some of you guys. So there it is, Philip Pullman, Count Colston. In 2002, the Nobel Committee awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics to a scientist named Daniel Kahneman. Kahneman's done all sorts of things these days. They explain why teachers are paid so little, why football teams are worth so much, and why bodily functions help set a limit on the size of hog farms. A hog excretes three to five times as much as a human, 
So far, we have thousands of products that often produce more waste than the neighbouring cities. Despite all the great research generated by economists, in 2002, Nobel Prize was notable because Carlyle is not an economist, an economist. He is a psychologist. And for decades, the late Emil Spetsky, Carlyle studied and clarified the kinds of misperceptions and boundaries that fuel many of the common forces I will talk about in this book. Ta-da, as if you hadn't guessed. Um, so I'm reading The Drunkard's Walk at the moment. It is a super book recommended to me, nonetheless, by my daughter, who's an avid reader, as am I. Um, it is a fabulous book about a subject that people usually find really dry, probability, and I recommend it.